All right, joining us uh, for more on this uh, is the chairperson of the organization Undoing Tax Abuse, Wayne Duvenage. Mr. Duvenage, a pleasure to see you. Thanks for joining us here on SABC News. Nice to be with you. All right. I'm going to start with two questions because I think they kind of uh, link to each other. Um, you know, only now some sort of, you know, framework between the two uh, ministers being approved then by the president. First, what you make um, of, of that. Um, and then, of course, the MOU states many things. It talks about the electricity minister's uh, focuses and that, you know, he must focus on all aspects of the electricity uh, crisis. Why should that necessarily be, be, be put in, in writing? One would think that, you know, when, when you're given a certain portfolio, you already know you know what your job is what your objectives um that you must achieve are why must this be put in some sort of like a memorandum of understanding between two um two ministers um yeah look i think it is necessary first of all it's been long uh, in, in waiting this is um you know minister uh Jusienzo Romajopo has been in his position for almost a year now uh or going on close to a year and um and there's been a lot of lack of uh, clarity between the, actually three roles because you also have Gwede Mantash's DMRE uh, playing a big role yeah. in the energy space. Uh, but I guess um, when it comes to the shareholder representative, and this is where there's still a bit of confusion because oh. the board now re re reports directly to the Minister of Electricity, uh, and yet uh, Praveen Gordon or the DP uh, 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 is, is still responsible for uh, or always the representative, the shareholders' representative. That doesn't make sense to us. I mean, how do yeah. you have the board and the restructuring, which which I think uh, Jose Enzo has to deal with, uh, reporting to him, but but the restructuring of Eskom now still reports into Praveen Godan. It re really is confusing, yeah. I must yeah. say. Uh, we're trying to put things in writing and give some clarity, but I think it's given uh, more ambiguity to, to what their respective roles are. You know, th running organizations like this and having oversight and, and making sure that there's accountability, you need to have clarity in these reporting lines as to who it reports to. I think it is time that it does report to the Minister of Electricity uh, and it must just move, the whole lot must move away from DP. We also know that DP is going to be folded uh, in, the, in, in the coming uh, months as they start setting up this new whole uh, asset management company uh, within government. Should we be concerned and perhaps are you concerned that, you know, one or both of the ministers in this particular instance, even though there is this memorandum of understanding in place, would, you know, usurp their roles or one would think that, you know, they, they should be playing this particular role and, the, and it's, you know, it's put you in writing. But as you say, you know, there is a confusing aspect. The fact of the matter is that this board still reports uh, to Minister Praveen Gordon. But, you know, we've given all these tasks to the Minister of, of Electricity. Should we be worried about the fact that that, that this still might not actually work out yeah as i said it's, it's it is confusing i mean you just talk about for instance uh where where the minister of electricity has to ensure that all matters dealing with transmission are dealt with uh and then and then uh you know further on in the memorandum uh the uh it talks about uh, dpe still responsible for the opera opera op operationalization of, yeah. of this transmission company now the transmission company if you're going to manage it and run it under electricity department then why is the DPE uh, establishing uh, the, the, that responsibility. So it really doesn't make sense. Restructuring of ESCOM also sits with DPE, but if you're managing the board, the board now reports to the uh, Minister of Electricity, and you are, uh, are tasked with getting ahead and fixing ESCOM and, and getting load shedding dealt with, well, the restructuring of this organization is all about that responsibility. So again it just is as clear as mud it doesn't mm -hmm. really make sense and i think i think you're the trying to be half pregnant in this space you've got to make a decision and 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 move forward and i think it needs to be put into the lap of the minister of electricity yeah. and jose romachopa must take over the reins now as it as it used to sit in the lap of uh, praveen godan yeah. uh, just hand it over and get on with the job yeah, and and where does this leave? I mean, you, you, you know, uh, when we first uh, started our conversation, you actually mentioned uh, Minister Gwede Mantashe, and you know, some some people are of the view that the, the Minister of Electricity, his role primarily, you know, uh, some would like to think is was really just to neutralise what might have been a tricky situation between Minister Pravin Gordan and uh, uh, Minister Gwede Mantashe. So you know, one would, would want to know, you know, where, where does that actually then leave um, uh, Minister Gwede Mantashe if there are aspects um, of this particular portfolio that he might need to. Be 
be involved in or does this now sort of draw the line in terms of, listen, you, you're not involved at all now? Yeah, well, you see, uh, under, uh, under the DMRE with Gwede Mantashi, the new IRP come out, uh, as, as your previous insert spoke about, and um, and that sits in his domain. Uh, but but again, uh, Jose Enzo Ramachopa is now responsible for the purchase of additional capacity. Uh, now that sits, uh, the IRP informs what where the additional capacity is going to come from, and yet the purchasing now sits with uh, Jose Enzo Ramachopa. Now you have to you have to watch that there's no conflicts of interest between these two. You can't be the referee and the player in this mm. space, which was the case very often in the past. Uh, but I think the, we really need a lot more clarity and, uh, and, and DPE should be really pulling out of this and making sure that the, the, there are no blurred lines between DMRE, uh, that's Gwede Mantashi's portfolio, yeah. and uh, Jose and Saramahu's portfolio. I think that a lot of South Africans would say to you, listen, I actually don't care uh, whose who's job is what. What I care about is whether or not, uh, you know, there's load shedding, whether or not I have lights. Um, and, I, you know, I wonder how you, you think this would, you know, ultimately play out um, at, at the end of the day, you know, with, with these roles that now have been uh, stipulated, what they believe to be quite clearly but what you've said is actually quite confusing um you know the issue of load shedding is still on the you know on the minds of, of south africans and and, and we, we understand that it's still it's coming back you know we had a bit of a reprieve for a little bit there um but yeah how do you see all of this in the long run actually just playing out when it comes to the biggest issue of all which is the issue of power and electricity and load shedding which we have been dealing with yeah, no, you had a good question. And I think the reality is that, um, you know, we, uh, the government has allowed Eskom to get into the mess it is in uh, for many years now, and it needs to be fixed. They've spoken about the energy uh, recovery plan, and it's still not in place. I mean, to have load shedding uh, in the first week of January when businesses haven't even started up yet sends a, sends a really worrying sign. What we need is accountability, the strongest teams out there, given very clear mandates to go ahead and and. All the political interference needs to get out of the way and then i don't see that getting out of the way quite for quite soon uh, as chris yelland was saying earlier on we are really concerned about the integrated resource plan uh, it doesn't make sense uh, there's going to be a lot of ch pushback and challenge from civil society as mm -hmm. we go into the uh, public engagement space now. Uh, and we need transparency. Uh, it's very, very important that government engages with society, with civil society, with a lot of experts out there to make sure that we get the best energy resources and plans in place for this country's future. Doesn't seem to be the case. Again, we seem to have an IRP that is being manipulated uh, for specific outcomes, and that doesn't make sense to us. So if we don't get the information i'm afraid we're going to have to use the rule of law to make yeah. sure the government uh, does play open cards with the with the irp uh, and hopefully we'll get there but it, uh, you know there aren't very clear signals that they're being serious about this all right many thanks to you wayne wayne duvenage is the chairperson of the organization undoing uh, tax abuse uh, there of course uh, speaking to us uh, on the back of the memorandum of understanding which has been approved by president Cyril ramaphosa uh, between the minister of public enterprise praveen gordon and the minister of electricity jose enzo ramakopa uh, the mou seeking to clarify the two ministers responsibilities uh, concerning uh, escom